Makima. Nice, lush red hair, beautiful, mesmerizing eyes, a figure that makes you drop dead, and a story that is batshit crazy. Remember guys, the level of hotness means a level of crazy. She started the night here, but as the nights progressed, she's gotten crazier but no hotter. In modern shonen, Makima from Chainsaw Man has stood out as one of the elite antagonists. She's built different. The reaction to her name is polarizing. As the teen male fans who never felt the touch of a woman literally uh, bark when they see her name. Whoop, 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 whoop. He's one of us now. And the other half of the manga fans wish that she drowns in hell for what she did to Denji. So what did Makima exactly do that resulted in this reaction? It certainly isn't something as one dimensional as her physical features. <laughs> That's why this video is so important for everyone in our community. Otherwise, you won't confused, understand Chainsaw Man's story. Right now, As a child, Makima was brought up by the Japanese government. They nurtured and taught her things to grow in the environment and ideology which supported the government in the future. Yeah, who would have guessed the government doing morally bad things, am I right? Of course! The government believed getting Makima the control devil on their side as it was a great idea for their future endeavors. With her powers, they would be able to manipulate the world in their favor. Due to this, she was raised by the authorities into becoming a ruthless, cold, and no-nonsense woman without learning any love and compassion. Fujimoto highlights that humans brought upon their own demise with their selfish desires, as it's quite ironic that they try to control the physical manifestation of their own fears. They had a role in creating her in this way. As we know, Makima used to be an innocent demon, shown with her latest incarnation in the form of Nayuta. But that's the conclusion of her tragic story. How did it end up this way? Well, for that, let's rewind to the very beginning. Makima had strong ideals, but ultimately, she is manipulative to the core. She is a simple woman. Once she sets her goal, she achieves it regardless regardless of the collateral damage. And the best or worst example of her in action is her pursuit of Denji, or rather, his heart. Makima carefully constructed every part of Denji's life to find the best way to completely break him to sever his contract with Pochita because she deemed Denji unworthy of being associated with her hero, Chainsaw Man. Earlier, we just mentioned how ironic it is that the government tried to instill certain values into Makima and the fact that she believes them just blows our mind. Your necessary evil is just an excuse to just justify your own crimes. Those excuses are unnecessary to society. The truly necessary evils are always collared and controlled by the state. This is a quote from Makima in chapter 33 of the manga to a Yakuza leader. It is apparent that the government was successful in influencing the control devil's mind. For Makima, ruthlessly killing anyone is justified till the time it serves a bigger purpose. If we were to take the classic example of making choices. Makima would always make the decisions that are objectively right. Let's say if she had to choose between saving two young people or an old man, she'd save the younger ones. If she had to choose between her comrades or an important figure in the world, she'd choose the latter no matter what. In our opinion, it would be impossible to forcefully instill all of these values into Makima because, well, she's the goddamn control devil. It seems like Makima simply accepted them as she found their perspective to be fair. It also ties into how Makima sees us, humans. To her, we humans are no different than smarter versions of dogs. Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> woof, 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 Okay, check the pinned comment for a surprise. For Makima, it's likely a duty to protect the general population because Makima is above us, as if she was born to serve a high purpose. 
purpose, much like a godly being. This is especially visible with the way she dictates how Chainsaw Man should act in chapter 95, and how Denji is a dirt compared to her. Her need to control all beings below her is definitely a tell of the same. Although she isn't a case of a strong god complex, you can see some similarities in her behavior. This also makes her different from all the other devils that exist, as even the smarter devils like emotions like empathy or rather pity in this case. This adds another layer of subtlety to Makima's character, as no matter how ruthless and manipulative she acts, all of it is only pity for humans. Yes, she yearns for the Chainsaw Man Devil, but she wants to use him to get rid of all the evils in society, removing pain and suffering once and for all. Remember from our Pachita video we posted last week, we learned that Chainsaw Man has the ability to erase a devil's existence entirely, not allowing the devils to respawn. And thus, in chapter 84, Magima tells us that only she can remember humanity's greatest calamities like World War II, AIDS, multiple diseases, and nuclear weapons amongst other things. Seeing all of these dangerous things destroying humanity over and over again made her knowledge a burden. The Chainsaw Man manga explores the theme that ignorance is bliss. However, Makima is the least ignorant of all creations on the planet, even attaining the knowledge that governments are corrupt and control freaks. Her ideology shifted to make sure these calamities never happen again, so humanity will never have to remember such evil things. But this ideology can also be criticized. For example, if Makima got rid of human fears, such as the notion of death itself or other existential calamities, it would eventually lead the world to become immoral, straying away from humanity. It's no doubt that empathy and other emotional attachments arise because of the fear of death and loss itself, as humans could easily put themselves in another person's shoes if they thought about their own death for instance. Forgetting these important important concepts will cause humans not to learn from history and their mistakes, leading to a more adrenaline junkie world that would become selfish in their own desires without a care about others. At the end of the day, the existence of evil is necessary for the existence of goodness, just like the fear of death is part of life and what makes us human, appreciating life altogether. One thing that the revelation of Makima being the mastermind brings to light about her character is how contradictory she is. At the very base, she craves for the Chainsaw Man Devil and even loves him, but being the control devil completely opposes the very emotion of love. There's always a trade-off between love and control that a person has to consider whilst establishing a relationship with any person. Every relationship is based on compromise, so love means giving up a part of the control on the many factors that influence your life. As we talked about her abnormal upbringing earlier, Makima never fully understood the concept of love, much less received it. Even the way she dresses to the way she conducts herself is a reflection of of control and power. But as wild as it sounds, she does have some affection for humans in the same way that she does for her dogs. She finds them adorable. Meow, you're so cute for being so ignorant enough to wake up every day and go about their day because to her, these lives are all expendable. Yep, that's right. It's ironic that her life's purpose is to make the world a better place by eliminating fearsome devils like war, but she is is a true utilitarian when it comes to human lives. There is no difference between adopting a new dog and finding another human to serve her life goal for Makima. While she certainly cares about how humans perceive her, as reflected by how she admits the people of Japan love her, she couldn't care less about flesh and bone. That's because they are all susceptible to her control and manipulation, and none of it is real. Hell, even Argy loved her, but despite spending so many years 
years next to her, he couldn't fathom a single answer as to why she did so. This tells us that Makima did want deep and real affection, but she had never received it because to love someone, you have to let them be your equal. But in Makima's world, someone was her inferior from the get-go, and if they weren't, she would make sure they are one way or another, as she tried to do so with Chainsaw Man. There was no midway. In fact, the only entity that she displays an abnormal amount of affection and borderline obsession with is Chainsaw Man. She is a clear fan of everything that he represents. In a twisted way, he was Makima's idol, who wouldn't fall into her control and effectively not love her so easily, making it genuine. Thus, Makima goes out of her way to do everything in her power just so she could be next to him and be with him. She was dead set on controlling him and doesn't care about confounding consequences like being eaten. Because if she did end up being eaten and that happened, she would still be one with him, inside of him, for eternity. Mazaya. Yeah! Is that weird? Yes, yes. Quite romantic if you ask me. Except that Makima was ready to ravage millions of people just so she could be loved by Chainsaw Man. And in her eyes, someone like Denji, such an inferior human who was incapable of even survival and guilty of killing his own father, had received the heart of her beloved Chainsaw Man. It was absolutely abhorrent to her thinking, you're trash! Disgusting! But what if the reason she truly saw him was salvation? Makima's life, even as a child, was plagued with misfortune because she was never treated as a human, despite donning enough physical features and mannerisms to be seen as one. She was also an expendable tool who wouldn't die and would just respawn, so nobody must have ever <sighs> cared about her life. She wasn't Makima to anybody. Anybody. She was the control devil. This hits hard when you realize that the control devil's rebirth had no memories of the past and started off as a simple child seen in her respawn at the end of Chainsaw Man Part 1. But Makima had to bear the burden of being a sinister entity who warped the thin rope of love and control. So now, who could get her out of this endless cycle of indifference? Of course, the hero of hell, the savior and destroyer, Chainsaw Man alone. He has the power to eat devils and completely erase their existence from the world. Death and love were the two things Makima couldn't fully control, and Chainsaw Man was both of these things in one. However, the only way Makima knew to claim Chainsaw Man was through control, and in a way, Pochita understood her need for love. Just like her, he also desired to be hugged, something that being with Denji had fulfilled. Makima had the same depravity and a manufactured sense of the world. So after her rebirth, the only way to stop an untainted child like Nayuta from becoming like Makima was to provide her with genuine love and affection, the antithesis of control, which was the devil's primary nature. As a connotation to this nature, Makima's role in Chainsaw Man's story is quite meta. She pulls the readers along with a thread as she is the main cast, the main love interest and later the main antagonist. The entire story is led by her, even more than it is by Denji because she is our protagonist's goal and purpose both. As the puppeteer, Makima lacks empathy for the entities she considers her puppets. She ruthlessly uses whatever information or pawns she has to manipulate them as her threads. For example, constructing a beautiful life for Denji, all to take it away, to then even prying open his wounds of abuse and torture just to break him and the contract. It is bone chilling to know that Fujimoto, the creator of Chainsaw Man, based Makima's character on documentaries about abusive parents, which is why her actions seem so cruel and real to the readers. She was willing to gaslight Denji as a survivor of abuse just so she could have what she loved. 
But this lack of empathy itself turned around to be her fatal flaw. In her final battle against Chainsaw Man, Makima described him as someone who doesn't wear clothes or spit or even talk. Every action that the Chainsaw Man takes should be chaotic because that's what defines him. Ironically enough, she tells this to Pachita or Chainsaw Man himself, not knowing that it wasn't Denji fighting her and that Chainsaw Man had uh, changed. Hey. Had she paid attention and understood either of them with some empathy, she wouldn't have fallen prey to Denji's trap. However, at the end of the day, Makima's good qualities like kindness and emotional Emotional. issues like depression Ah. are all transcended by her abominable actions. She is more than just an antagonist, she is the anti-hero in Chainsaw Man and that makes her one of the best in new gen shonen stories. I'm blushing. However, her story doesn't end with Chainsaw Man Part 1. Whilst the control devil is reborn as Nayuta, one ripple effect of Makima's objectives is already shown to us in Chainsaw Man Chapter 105. The war devil, or Yoru as we know it, says that it despises Chainsaw Man for growing weaker due to the popularity instead of fear. Makima's actions may have very well snowballed into an all out battle of devils against the weakened Chainsaw Man devil so make sure to hit the notification bell because we are going to post more content. Whilst we wait for the major events to unfold, you should go watch our video explaining the life and importance of Puchita in Chainsaw Man.